Hey, do you have one of these vehicles right here? Do you have one of these engine codes right here? This video will tell you how to get rid of those codes, which will increase your gas mileage, save you money on the repair, and help the environment. If you have one of these codes, it means you're having a problem with your evaporative emissions purge flow system. What happens is, when gasoline gets hot, the gasoline will evaporate away. Hey, that's your money floating away that could have been used to power your vehicle. So when this system is working correctly, here's your gas tank. The fumes build up, and then they pass through this little valve here that separates the fumes from the liquid. Look, there's a little float that floats up and blocks the passageway if any liquid gets up there. The fumes are absorbed into the charcoal canister right here. It is stored as a liquid until the engine is ready to use it. When the computer decides that the engine is ready by looking at a bunch of sensors over here, it opens up the purge flow valve here, also known as the solenoid. So it flicks it off rapidly to control how much fumes are getting into the engine. So then they get sucked into the engine and burned. But wait, there's a purge flow sensor. The purge flow sensor lets the computer know how much fumes are going into the engine. It outputs a variable voltage signal. When no fumes are flowing on my vehicle, it outputs 1.3 volts. When lots of fumes are going in, it outputs 4.95 volts. And it usually varies between those two extremes. Enough with the foreplay. What do these engine codes mean? If you have a P1443, it means that the purge flow sensor is not detecting a big enough voltage change between when the gas should be flowing and not flowing. So on my vehicle, I read 1.3 volts when no gas is flowing. However, if the computer tells this thing to open and it's still reading 1.3 volts, it knows, hey, there's a problem here. Maybe there's a broken hose here or there's a blockage inside the hose preventing the gas from flowing. Alternatively, 444, the purge flow sensor is pu outputting too low of a voltage signal. Each purge flow sensor is a special little guy. However, the factory spec says the minimum it can read is 0.4 volts. So it's much less than that. It's going to be like, hey, I'm defective. If you're reading a P1445, the purge flow sensor is putting out too high of a voltage signal. So the maximum the factory spec is 4.8 volts. So if it's much above that, it's going to trigger a code. Maybe it's crossed with a short circuit or something. Maybe battery voltage got on that signal wire. You don't belong there. Finally, if you have P0443, you have a purge solenoid right here that has some sort of electrical fault or it's stuck. EVAP system. And let me show you where that is right here and how to get access to it. Uh, click this off here. Pull off the electrical components. Just like that. Undo this and pull off the hose. Loosen this. Pull this off. Work this back and forth. Remove this out of the way. And here it is, right here. This is the EVAP system right here. This is the solenoid. This is the EVAP sensor. And it connects up underneath here to the manifold. First thing to do is disconnect the vacuum hose from underneath the manifold right here. Hook it up to a vacuum pump and see if it'll hold 16 inches of mercury. And obviously this one doesn't hold anything. And it's because of the low quality hosing here, which I'll show you. Now disconnect the hose from the solenoid and check for any sort of blockage from the hose that goes to the charcoal canister all the way back to the gas tank. It should not hold a vacuum in this case. It does not, so that's good. Always replace vacuum hosing with quality hose. Compare the wall thickness of the hose on the right compared to the hose on the left. Also note that the hose on the right is reinforced with uh, fibers. This makes a huge difference when uh, sealing on barbed fittings like this. This hose, even though it looks good, will not hold a vacuum on this barb fitting and it leaks right around it. Uh, this one's a little specialized. It's an uh, elbow that comes right off the charcoal canister and it goes from 3 8 inch to a quarter inch. 
and you can see that this one is severely cracked and needs to be replaced I made it is composed of a Dorman product 47029 then it has a little 3 8 to quarter inch uh, vacuum connector it came in this pack here Dorman 47308 and finally there's a short length of a quarter inch uh, hose There are four clips and uh, four screws. Apply the emergency brake, uh, move the shifter around after you get the keys in. Then these will pop right off. Two of the screws came from here. This will pop right off. There you go. Shut off. I replaced the purge flow sensor with a brand new one and I tested it to make sure it was good. Now I have the voltmeter hooked up to pin wire 103 which is the ground and pin wire 11 which is the signal wire with the engine fully warmed up I'm reading 1.4 volts approximately and I just completed a typical drive the car is in park now, and the engine is warmed up. And you can see it varied from a minimum of 1.36 volts to a maximum of 4.95 volts. And while the engine was under load, it was the voltage was constantly varying. You can hit the accelerator and you can see how the purge flow sensor constantly varies. That's the response of the solenoid opening and closing. see I've disconnected the solenoid there from the purge flow sensor here and we'll start it the engine after hooking this all back up so we have the mass air flow sensors and all that connected and uh, we'll cover our finger over it and see what happens so my finger covering it is reading 1.5 volts when I let off we're going to about 6 volts With the key on, but the engine off, it's reading 1.8 volts approximately. And now with the engine running, it's reading about 3.57 volts, which is seems a little high. Uh, the My cover is reading about 3.57 seven volts. I let my finger off. It's shooting up to five and three quarter volts, which is out of range. So we can start by vacuum testing the purge flow sensor. There's a vacuum gauge, see it'll hold the vacuum. So I'll just slip it right on there. And I cover it here. Look at that. Not getting any vacuum because the bond on this is junk. You can see that. So that's one problem. You can see that there's a little uh, thermal resistor in here and it's uh, temperature sensitive. So as air flows over it, it'll change its uh, voltage output. 
here's the brand new celluloid. You can see it's not doing a very good job of holding a vacuum. You can see the needles falling rapidly right down the zero. The purge flow sensor now. We're going to take a reading between here and here. And it's 31.5 above 25.5 is good. Now we're going to take a reading between here and here. Below 190 ohms is good. We're at 108 ohms, so that's good. The final reading I'm going to take is between here and here. Uh, below 160 ohms is good. It's 76.4 ohms, so that's fine. Just got to pop this a lift and pop this off. Force it off. Like that. I've hooked up the vacuum gauge to the solenoid and pumped it up. I've also connected alligator connectors underneath here with a piece of paper between them to prevent them from touching. And I've connected one end to the negative post. And now I'm going to touch the other end to the positive post and the vacuum should immediately go away. Now these solenoids get stuck a lot. There you go. And you should hear a clicking noise. Here I'm plugged in the back of the connector for the solenoid itself and I'm getting about again 12.2 volts which is good. The solenoid is reading about 52 ohms which is within range. Additional tests you can run is with the key on, you can test the purge flow sensor's voltage. I'm getting 12.2 volts approximately. Notice that the connector is disconnected from the PCM. You can check for short circuits between pin 67 and pin 71, that's a purge solenoid by connecting your ohm meter between them. It should read over 10,000 ohms. In this case it reads auto limit which is good. That, this has a arrow on it here. It needs to go towards the engine. Right there. Pop it back on. Pop it back on. Make Reconnect your electrical ten connections to the solenoid. Right, like that. And, and I'm reading 55.1 ohms. And we know that the solenoid is approximately 52 ohms from our earlier measurement. So we know beyond a reasonable doubt that that circuit is good. If you found that video helpful, I have many other videos on the Ford Escort, including testing your oxygen sensor, troubleshooting your transmission, replacing the steering rack bushings. Additionally, I have a video on chemically dissolving a broken drill bit in non-ferrous metals.